hear me now? I can. We can hear you great. Yeah. And, and we have a guest with us today, Stacey. We've never had a guest join us before. I know. Self, please. My name's Ava. And how old are you, Ava? I'm in second grade, seven years old. Great. And you're joining us. Why? Because you asked me to. <laughs> I did ask you, but what are we talking about? <laughs> to have you join us. Um, we're talking about, uh, 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 we're talking about toy, the best toys for, uh, pre-Kers and toddlers. And infants and school ages. Uh -huh. So, um, Stacy, do you want to take a couple of minutes and introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Stacy Benj and I'm an early childhood speaker and presenter from the Dallas, Texas area. And I am very passionate about free play, child-led play, being child-centered, and just authentic, hands-on, interactive experiences. Welcome. Great. Thank you for making the time to join us for this conversation. I'm Prerna Richards, and you pronounce Prerna like you're praying. And um, I am also an early childhood trainer. Uh, I'm a mother and a grandmother. And this is my granddaughter. And um, like Stacy, I'm also passionate about play being the way how children process the world and how children make sense of their world. So Stacy and I decided that we would have this conversation for parents, grandparents, educators, um, older sibling, if you're taking care of younger siblings, uh, anybody who has young kids in their life and wants to understand the world of play and wants to do things without costing a lot of money mm -hmm. and things around the house that um, you can use as play. So what I'll be sharing is Ava's childhood. This, is, this was her childhood at our home. <laughs> <laughs> so all the things that she played with as she was growing up, this is what we're talking about. So should we get started, Stacey? I say, let's do it. Let's do it. So let, let's, uh, we can go back and forth and we can see some of yours and we can see some of ours. Hi, Janet, you joined us. Great, <laughs> great. Okay. And one of, one of the things I want to mention real quick before we get started. So uh, Prey and I have learned that we do well when we just come up with the framework and then we just kind of spontaneously go from there. And so what we don't know what the other has picked out to share. So I think it's going to be interesting to see if we have things that are super similar so uh, yeah knowing us it maybe is similar oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> go for it okay so you know we kind of talked about breaking uh, breaking some ideas down based on age group so do we just kind of start talking about some things for infants yeah let's do that let's do that okay. and you know, yeah we'll just work way through infants and as we go older let's look at the toys that Stacey's going to share us for infants what do you think of them let's look so, um, and like Prana, I'm a mother, my boys are both adults now, but I have the honor of living just a mile from my great niece and great nephew. So my great nephew, he just turned 18 months old, but when he's over at our house, one of the things, one of my go-tos is measuring cups. Oh, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Measuring cups along with measuring spoons. <laughs> yes, measuring cups and measuring spoons. And then just like random uh, like boxes, you know, and you can even put something in the box and it can make noise. But just again, very loose parts. Um, so it's not actually a toy per se. I mean, it is because the child makes it that. But these are things you would just have around your house. So when my great nephew comes over, these are the things I'm going and pulling out for him. Um, my old sorry my youngest son plays tennis so we go grab tennis balls and we kind of you know throw those around as well so what do you have for uh infants okay so infants um so the way i would frame it is that it these things you can introduce to an infant but it continues as they get older so the things yes. that an infant does on a high chair i feel like the minute you can sit in a high chair you can start playing you can start exploring High chairs mm -hmm. really should be an exploration table. They shouldn't just be just for eating. Mm -hmm. So some of what I'm sharing, you can start with an infant in a high chair, but it can continue beyond because um, Ava still likes to play with some of those things that she was playing with. <laughs> so 
For infants, I think what I really like is um, filling up uh, like things you can put on the ground, the, fill up a Ziploc bag with maybe hair gel mm -hmm. or fill up a Ziploc bag with um, foam or shaving cream or something. So they can mix the colors, they can do the Ziploc bag on their tables, they can do Ziploc bags on the floors. Um, I also like this for infants and toddlers. It is a, a CD uh, player, or remember the old fashioned CD players we used to have on, yes. a, on a fish line. And if you hang some of these above their changing table or the crib or outside on the tree, on the branches, when it mm -hmm. catches the sun, it makes rainbows. Ava, you're being hypnotized by it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so those are always fun. Uh, I like these for infants for grabbing and pulling. This is uh -huh. a new can and what it has. The magic scarf. The magic scarf. Ava has played with this since she was little. So this is how this works. I'm going to let her figure show us how you play this game because she has played it a lot. So these things are really good while she's showing us how to do that for grasp and fine motor and sensory. And it's just, uh, you know, you just tie up scarves and um, whatever you can stuff. So you can see it just goes on. It's the magic stuff, <laughs> yeah. call it. And um, this is good. Uh, uh, anything else for infants that you have? I got no, it. Yeah. Yep, she got the whole entire wow. thing. <laughs> Um, you know, and I kind of like a lot of stuff that I have, like you mentioned, really can grow with the children and, and different, uh, so like the measuring cups and stuff that can be with any age group. And you could put that with, uh, in a sensory tub, you can fill it with, um, sand or rice or water, and then, you know, getting pictures and stuff and using that, you know, as well. This is another one for infants and toddlers, uh, putting pom-pom balls in a whisk. So again, mm -hmm. a lot of this is hand-eye coordination. A lot of this is focus, but it's play. You know, children love mm -hmm. to explore. And you can do this by colors. This is a Slurpee cup, which I just put some paper on. And then if you make a hole in the lid, uh -huh. small, small pom-pom balls can be put in. They can be taken out. Um, Jello is good on an infant table to explore with jello. And if you put some berries in a jello, when they come across it, something hard uh -huh. comes up. So, uh -huh. you know, those, and, those are simple ones. Um, and something to add, when you, when you have things on the high chair tray and, and children do start playing with it. So not only is it sensory, but that's the beginning of the writing process, not only from the physical standpoint, but the writing composition, because um, before children can scribble and draw and write things, they have to learn that they can make marks. And that starts with having something on the high chair tray and wiping your hand through it and recognizing that you're making a mark. So that actually is the very beginning of writing. So that's, you know, it's a, it's, it's a great, wonderful sensory experience, but it also is part of that language and literacy process as well. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, you can use pudding, you can use jello, you can use whipped cream. Uh, because they're still sensory at that time, you can put food coloring in the whipped cream and uh -huh. have, you know, primary colors getting mixed. So, uh -huh. Exactly. Yeah, great. So um, moving on to toddlers, what do you have for toddlers? Uh, so something that's kind of fun with toddlers is um, having like muffin tins and then just muffin uh, liners. And uh, I mean, you can put them into the cups or the, the muffin tin cups, or you can just line them up. You can put, you know, pom-pom balls into the, the muffin tins. Um, so it doesn't have to just be this, but so there's a variety there with it uh, as well. And then one more thing, I have a lot of socks, like, um, like random socks. I actually use this in my gross motor training where I throw about a hundred pairs of socks on the floor and it stresses everybody out, but they dance around and they match them up. And so, but you can do a lot of things just with mi mixed match socks. You can, like I said, you can sort them, you can put them into balls and throw them. Um, so that's something kind of open-ended that has endless possibilities too. I love that. I love the matching socks. It's such a good idea for, for you know, toddlers, preschoolers to match the socks. Um, this one I have, it's contact paper. So you can put contact paper on the ground, uh, the sticky uh -huh. side up. 
And this can be used for infants and toddlers, uh, well, older as well. Uh, and they could walk on it or they could, um, I mean, when they're crawling, uh, their feet get stuck or if the baby's not walking yet, you hold them on it and their feet get stuck and it's a new sensory experience or their hands if they're crawling. So contact mm -hmm. paper is really good, sticky side up. Um, you mentioned the muffin tins. I like to use the egg cartons. Oh, uh-huh. Uh, with this and with the tongs. So very nice. The tongs are really good to use from an early age. I love um, Dollar Tree and Walmart. You can buy all this so easily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So the whole the whole sorting colors. Uh, it's again. I think a lot of what I like to do is focus on sensory, but using the hand-eye coordination and strengthening mm -hmm. these muscles, which are the pre-writing muscles, but uh -huh. just introducing things that, you know, they're paying attention to what they're doing. Exactly. Exactly. It also helps with focus. I think it helps. With oh. focus. Yeah. To help them and just slow figure, down. you know, problem solving, figuring things out. So you, you like the tongs. I love uh, clothespins. Oh, yes. And so I, I like to use clothespins with a lot of things. And um, I guess kind of like probably more with, with preschoolers because you have to have quite a bit of strength to do this. But I always say add clothespins to anything and you just add a whole different element. And so one of my favorite things when I was teaching in my classroom is I just had a big bucket of just craft sticks and clothespins. And so you can create whatever, you can do designs, you can do different color craft sticks. Again, these are things you can get at the dollar store or a craft store, um, but just super open-ended. I use them for fun at the counter and I made people out of them. Yeah, she used them before the craft sticks and she's made people out of them. Oh yes, you can do a lot of things with them. The clothespins are great if you get cups and you put numbers on them and you can put that many clothespins and you can take them out. And in the beginning, you know, you're, you're just grabbing them out. And the game is that the adult puts them back on and the child grabs it. I love uh -huh. it. I mean, it's just such a fun way, such a fun way yeah. to engage them. Yeah, craft sticks are good for people. Absolutely. And you mentioned cups. I have, <laughs> it's like, I just have a whole box of things here. I know, um, right? Cups are like wonderful, uh, again, very, very open-ended. These are like little Dixie cups that when I was cleaning out from under my boy's bathroom, um, I found a huge thing of these that we had gotten from Costco and were never used. So um, I'm like, well, we can't throw these away. They can be used for something, but really all ages. And uh, I mean, it can be crumpled up after, you know, we're, or we can build with them or whatever, but younger children can crumple them. Um, good for that hand strength. And then we can just recycle, you know, when we're finished, um, if, it, if it's, if you can't reshape it, you know, so uh, those cups and then like solo cups as well. And um, these are actually from my oldest son's graduation party four years ago, but I love because it has a variety of colors and they're translucent. So you can put these um, and hold them up to the light and it actually creates different colors. So again, we can build with these and you can get really high with the building. Yeah. Uh, you can put things in them. Yeah, when my great niece was here a couple of years ago, uh, she and my one of my sons, they kept building things like as tall as her and then we would knock them down. And that was so much fun. And we had the noise and then just the, the pure joy of it. But cups are really good to have yes, too. Cup towers are the best, cup towers. We're making a big tower over here because you know we have to have something in our hands constantly. So this is good. I also forgot for babies, if you want to um, tie it to their crib or their stroller or tie it to their shoe, like, you know, just with a string and the whole movement, it's so good to watch and kick and um, oh. incorp incorporate it. So preschool, yay, my favorite age. Three and yeah. up. There's so much we can do with three and up. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. So, you know, again, the craft sticks and clothespins work great for that. This is something I had in my classroom, but then, I mean, you could very easily do at home. Um, my mom went to the fabric store. I mean, this literally is about 15 years old. I have like a huge box of all this different fabric. And my mom just kind of sewed it up for me in different lengths just kind of because I have no hemi, no sewing capability. <laughs> but um, I used to have this throughout my classroom, but I would put clothespins with it as well. But you could create costumes with it. Um, this 
this fabric right here, I saw children make it into an astronaut uniform. It could be a baby blanket. Um, is, it like I, is it like a blanket? No, no, it's it's just this shiny little, this metallic material <laughs> that was on the clearance rack. And so, I love it, I love but, it. Yeah, and just so I just have like a variety of colors and textures, but just, I mean, we, we can do flannels and plaids, but just doing materials and um, just kind of seeing, what, you know, what the children come up with. And I used to love this in my classroom because in the Dramatic Play Center, children would spend as much time creating their costumes as they would, you know, then playing out whatever it is that they designed the costume for. Yeah, well, so, basket in her classroom with all dressing up clothes and that's one of the favorite things she does wrapping them around her constantly no don't get them don't get them no, <laughs> no, no, no don't get them right now because we already them. <laughs> okay so um and i'm writing the other side of things on the floor so i can okay okay so <laughs> this is another fun one this uh, vegetable strainer to put uh -huh. uh, scarves, uh, you mentioned material that made me think of this. Scarves can go through it. Also pipe cleaners. You know, this is so good again. Uh, you wanna do this, okay, you can do this. Uh, we have done this for brain break. We, we I put made the, a break. You made a break, yeah. You've done it for brain break and how <laughs> many can you put in and how, can you, how many can you grab out? So mm -hmm. as the children get older, uh, I think it's really nice to um, help these things grow with the child because the game will change, the play will change, and um, you can see it that she's doing it in. It's good for scarves. It's good for pipe cleaners. I love pipe cleaners and pom pom balls. I don't know what I do too. Doing. Yeah, you can do so much with it. And one more thing I like too is um, you know, like the nylon loops. Um, that you used to like make pot holders with yes yes yes. but um those are fun too and you can do a variety of things with those as well yes i think there's um i think there used to be a game that had little pegs and you had to stretch it over it yes which reminds me of this so this is a kitchen towel and hair ties you want to do that see she, she loves playing with any of this <laughs> even now even at this age so i say introduce it but then it is literally what has a child grows um, and you know it's again you were talking about stretching the rubber bands uh -huh. uh, the same kind of concept to build this muscle so you can see that that got her excited so uh <laughs> <laughs> well and it's funny you said that because I also have like um that's funny uh, I know, knew we uh, had many similar things I just knew. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and you know this time of year like getting um uh wrapping paper rolls are, are, you know, are really easy, save those. And, you know, when I was growing up, that was one of my favorite memories is like having, you know, the, the, the paper roll fight and, and, you know, and it, it destroys after a few minutes, but it's just so much fun. And look um, at how much pressure she's having to use on her fingers to really work those muscles. So even though you are seven, you're having to work these muscles, which we all need strengthening. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yes, paper, wrapping paper rolls, paper towel rolls, you're right, this is the tight time. The other one I really love is this, piggy banks. I love mm -hmm. piggy banks because again, she's been doing this since she was about 18 months. Again, look, she's just jumping from play to play. <laughs> um, because it's, it's so good for the hand-eye coordination. And again, you know, when they're little, they have to actually find the hole. So, mm -hmm. and also the concept of saving starts early. You never can be right. Not that. Right, <laughs> right, absolutely. <laughs> yes. What else? I'm trying. To, I'm trying to think what else I have in my bag down here. I, uh, you know, when you go to the Dollar Tree and stuff, um, I have gotten a lot of uh, like great materials from like the pet section, like aquariums oh. and like getting like the gemstones and the little rocks that go in the bottom of an aquarium. Th those are fun just to put out in a bowl and just to, you know, first of all, it's just kind of calming just to move the, you know, your hands in them, but yeah. you know, you can sort them, you can put them into the muffin tins, into the egg crates. Yeah. So yeah, that's a, um, you can go to the craft store too and get those, but I found like at Dollar Tree that a lot of times in their pet section, they'll have <laughs> they'll have some of those materials 
That is awesome. Uh, you know, um, have you ever done the salad spinner? No. Okay, so the salad spinner is pretty cool. You put colors in there. You put colors and you can use a pipette or you can use an eyedropper and you uh -huh. just put a coffee filter in it. You just put coffee filter and then you drop your favorite colors in it. And this. You spin it with this. Uh, you spin it this little thing round and round. Nice. So again, really good for this muscle, but also problem solving because this thing uh -huh. spins, you gotta spin the whole thing. So oh wow. Yeah, salad spinners are great for engaging the brain that way. Um, this is really fun, the silly straws. Oh, and I have not seen one of those in forever. <laughs> these are from the birthday party. <laughs> home the orange one yeah so yeah you get some silly straws and then uh -huh. you have a piece of felt and uh, the felt has a piece so i love felt the, the texture so y'all and you just may have a piece and a hole in the middle uh-huh and the idea is just to find the hole and uh thread it through again Move great around for great for focus great for just play really right right uh, Ava, one second, I'm going to show you something. And again, uh, rice, colored rice, colored pasta. Um, you know, I think you were talking about that earlier. Uh huh. And uh, I, I used to uh, dye the rice with Kool Aid. Uh, um, you just put a little bit of Kool Aid and a little bit of water, and it that adds a nice uh, smell to it. So, uh, so it kind of gives that extra sense to it, but yeah, so, and, and just let it, you know, I'd let it kind of dry for about 24 hours so that the coloring so doesn't come off. Powdered Kool -Aid? You use powdered Kool -Aid? Yeah. And I would just put the rice in a bowl and then just di uh, dump the, uh, the, the Kool-Aid packet. And I would just put like a tablespoon or so of water and just move it around and it dyes the rice. And so then it has a wonderful aroma to it. Okay, so I use uh, rose drops and I use lavender. Oh, uh-huh. Same idea. For this. Yeah. Exactly. And, and that's a really good point because, um, you know, when we use more than three senses, so if we're seeing something, touching something, hearing something, if you're playing with rice, um, uh -huh. hear it, and you add the sensory, the smell sense to it, it definitely wakes up the brain even more. Exactly. Yeah. So that's a... Really good one. Um, and I think kind of like on that point, like, you know, and not to go off on, on you know, uh, the screen time versus whatever, but that is something when we are playing with actual objects and, you know, we're hearing authentic sounds and we're touching and we're feeling different weights and textures. And that's something you don't quite get um, if, if you're just um, playing on a screen and, and yeah. That's right. I love pipe cleaners. I think every every home should have pipe cleaners, pom pom balls. This is a little uh, just threading the you know putting the. Oh, I made a bracelet once. That's right. You can make a bracelet. You can make a charm for your backpack, and you just uh -huh. put the beads. They're just different type, different shapes of beads, and you just put the beads on a pipe cleaner, and you can attach. Absolutely. It. Yeah. Maybe make it as a gift for somebody. If you're thinking of Christmas gifts, maybe they could have a keychain thing like this. I got that for my birthday. Okay, you got a keychain thing for your birthday. All right, I want to show you something. Oh, of course, every Santa. Oh my goodness, what is happening over here? <laughs> <laughs> we are definitely in play mode right now. Um, every Santa, I think, puts um, these cool things in all kind of stockings, bubbles and play dohs and. You, you can have a, you know, a stocking without those cool basics. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, these things along with the whisk are really good um, to scoop. And uh -huh. how, you know, it's a whole movement thing. I want to show you something, a wild um, outdoor play idea. Ava, would you like to be, um, do you have some other ideas, Stacey, while we get situated over here? Ava, I want to just play. You more. know, I always say like think back to like when you were a child um and, you know I talk about like when I went to my grandparents house like they didn't have toys per se for us to play with and we just kind of found what they had and and that there's so much 
uh, value in that. And so we played with things like dominoes and cards and we weren't actually playing the game. Like, you know, we would line the dominoes up or we'd make towers with them, um, you know, playing with marbles or whatever, but having uh, just kind of think those old fashioned things uh, and think what brought you joy as a childhood uh, and you're sorry, in your childhood. And then just kind of having those same experiences for children now. Agreed. I think the little simple joys in early childhood bring joy back even now. Hi, Sarita. Mm -hmm. I see that you're joining us. I'm so happy you're here. Okay, but this is a really cool thing to play outside. Um, and <laughs> I love how, okay, Ava's face lighting up, like so many things that you've brought out. Ava, we can tell that you love this because she gets so excited. So show this, is her her right here. this is her childhood. This is what we do when she comes here. But this is a cool one uh, starting as early as 18 months, two years. This is what you do. So the instructions are that you have to swap the ball. And this is again, you know, outside is really fun to do. So all uh -huh. I have is a, a badminton racket, which is super light, a ball, uh -huh. tennis ball. You were talking about tennis balls. I love tennis balls. Here's one second. I'm going to have you show one more thing. Can I have you show a cool thing that you can do? What happened to my scissors? There it is. Okay, so that's one game that you could do with the hand, but this is one that you could do with your feet coordination. Now, have you played? You remember that one? The feet coordination. <laughs> no, in a minute, in a minute, uh, in a minute. Just this one first, this one first. Okay, this is how you play the feet coordination. So, uh, okay. go over there, you have to... Can you see it? Okay, so she has to. Okay. <laughs> okay, you have to kick it. You have to kick it with. Whoa! <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Hold it with your hand and do it. So she holds it with one hand and and you kick it with your feet. So it's feet coordination, not just um, eye coordination, but it's harder when right. she holds it. So you can extend the play because you see you miss it. So. That's a very difficult task. That's really hard. That's very impressive, Ava. It's using a different part of your brain. And mm -hmm. this one is really cool. Okay, show Stacy that. We made a face on it, and we have to find the erasers inside where the opening is. So wait, you hear something. Uh huh. And then you see that there's no opening, and you wonder, where's that noise coming from? And then you draw a smiley face and then you have to figure out how, oh, so this is what it is. You make a hole and uh -huh. then you put things in it. And again, is this movement to get it in? My fingers can't do it. Can you get the erases out, please? It's all right. No, no, put your finger in. Not <laughs> She figured out this <laughs> because in the- uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> You can just dump it out. Yeah. yeah. But she's- Okay, so Nani's watching with us. That's nice. My mom is watching with us. Um, oh, hi. Yeah. It's my like, birthday buddy. <laughs> your birthday buddy. You do yeah. have the same birthdays. You do have the same birthdays. Um, of course, the manipulatives, right? We, we never can have enough manipulatives, Legos. Those are such good things to get. I got the, all the racers out. She got all the racers out. Okay, <laughs> back in there now. Um, yeah, I love Legos and blocks and, you know, anything that we can construct and build with. Um, and then, and I love wooden blocks because, again, I love the texture. I love the weight, um, you know, it, it, and it is, you know, the eye-hand coordination, but it also requires the entire body. And if you're building, you're really engaging that shoulder stability, too. So uh, yeah, kind of getting that whole body. Yeah, the pectoral muscles and with the chalk. Um, you know, putting a piece of paper under the table to draw will build this muscle. Drawing uh -huh. big chalks and big movement will help build uh -huh. this muscle. Yeah, totally. And I think like one of the things, that, you know, with everything that we've shown, again, it's very simple, very easily accessible, very inexpensive. Uh, but I think sometimes we get caught up when we're trying to decide what to buy for children or provide for them. Uh, we think, oh, we've got to get something educational. And, you know, I think that's kind of a marketing thing that we've bought into. Um, you know, I, I kind of encourage everybody to not kind of get out of that mindset a little bit. And again, just think of the simple because children can't play without learning and they can't learn without playing. It, it goes hand in hand. So these simple materials that we're showing have huge, big outcomes and, um, really are essential in preparing children for school and for life. So all those things that you hope for your child, it's going to be accomplished 
by all the things that, that we're showing here. It's just looking at it um, from a different light, I guess you would say. That's it, right, Stacey? That's it. What do we want our children to have? What qualities do we want our children to have? Do we want them to have focus, attention, enjoyment, love of learning, um, exploration, problem solving? All these qualities can be so easily done through play, like you said. Mm -hmm. And none of this costs a lot. Like everything that's around us, and what I'm really uh, not surprised one bit is your house looks the same as my house. Like seriously, that in terms of play. Yes. Uh huh. You know, and and, yeah. and and we do have a few things we bought over the time, like cloud clay. You know, cloud uh -huh. clay is really fun because it's a different foam feeling. I made a cake out of it. She made a cake out of it. <gasps> oh wow. <laughs> Oh, thank you for sharing that with me. And this is her all-time favorite. You can never have enough slime. <laughs> oh, I agree. I agree. <laughs> so if you do want to buy something, if you're a parent and a grandparent or a, a, I talk a, to it. You talk to it. She talks to it. So um, slime is great. Play-Doh is great. Mm -hmm. Home clay is clay, great because it has a different texture. Um, uh -huh. I think those would be the things that I would invest in. If not, I would go to Dollar Tree and Walmart and buy all the loose parts, hands-on things that we just shared, you know? Uh -huh. And- um, I have a surprise. She has a surprise. She's- Oh, okay. And, and when you go buy those things, like don't feel like you have to come home and you have to plan everything out. Just kind of put it out and just sit down and just start playing and see where that experience takes you. And you're going to be shocked at what, children are, you know, what they're going to come up with, you know, and, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here watching Ava with all the loose parts and she's about to create something to show us. And that's awesome. And that's, it takes a mind of its own. And that that's what we want. And this is what play should be. Play is not mm -hmm. dictated. And thank you for mentioning that you don't have to organize it and you don't have to set it up and you don't have to create it. Play is a natural process and play is an mm -hmm. exploration. It just happens. And if you see my table right now with the mess we've created. Oh, I forgot one very important thing while she's creating her thing. Woodworking. Woodworking. <gasps> yes, of course you got it. <laughs> I forgot about that because her grandpa is a woodworker. And so she has her own woodworking toolkit with A on uh -huh. it. And it for has Ava. For Ava. And yes. it has real tools in it. And I, I will tell you, we have had children as young as three who have come here. And they have used these real tools, uh, screwdrivers, this uh, hammer and a nail. It's um, it's so good. And and if there's anybody watching, and if you are sing thinking, love Ava, Sarita, saying thank you, Sarita. Um, if there's anything that you know you are wondering that this is not safe for them, trust them, teach them but let them explore because this will build so much more confidence than anything else. Real nails to hammer, real nails to pull out. And it was actually Sarita's son who had come and played with um, the tools one day. And uh, we had, to, oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, wow. I need one of those, Ava. <laughs> that looks quite fancy. That is, know, where are you gonna it's go? my hair. Very Hair. Not, it's not a hat, it's a hair. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. That makes it even better. <laughs> I love your funky hair. That is quite fun. I'm not almost done. I just have to add in. She's not quite done yet. Us. We could be here hours, Stacy. We could be here hours, literally. Which actually is an excellent point that you say that because one of the things um, that play does is it builds that. Uh, that sustained attention and, and screens are more of that reactive attention. And that's why children, they're reacting to what they're seeing on the screen and that's why they can sit for so long. But what we want to work on is that sustained attention. And that's, you know, again, going into school and into life, that's what's important. And, and you know, Ava's played here for a long time and you said this can keep going. And that's, that's one of the absolute beauties of it is it really is building that, that attention and that focus that's so important. You know, so many of the parents struggle and I, you know, I do coaching for families. And one of the things that bubbles up a lot is how can I help my child's attention? Um, they are very restless. They're very agitated. They keep jumping from things. They don't seem to be engaged in play. I would say you have to start young. Yeah, the I agree. Born, the minute they're born, you have to give them free play. You have to allow them to create and imagine 
And it's not mm -hmm. something that's adult led. We could, right. be, we could be great at entering their play, but they have to have access to all the things that we've shared for mm -hmm. them to do it. Um, exactly. And it's, and it's natural. Just let them, you know, the best things when they're little is like we started this show, if people have missed us when they joined us, start in the kitchen with all the Tupperware containers, let them match the uh -huh. lids and the boxes. And that's where play starts. Uh huh. And, and you know, and, and kind of get to know your child too and, and know what their interest is. And, and if, if they like to keep playing with something over and over and over, that's fine. There's a reason, there's a need. Um, and you'll see if when children repeat something and play that they're building upon it, you'll start to see things progress a little bit. Um, but don't feel like you always have to expose them to a lot of new things. Just start simple, start small. And then as they, you know, play, they continue on. What else can we add to it? What else can we bring in? And, you know, can we bring the pom-pom balls in? Can we bring the, the tongs and the tweezers in? But just adding those things and um, just follow the cues of your children. There's not like a right or wrong. It's just kind of just start doing it and start moving forward. Great. Um, I was have, trying to oh, see uh, on the comments. Okay, I'm done I, with my funky hair. All right, she's got Can funky I, hair. Are you ready, Miss Stacy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I need that for like all, like for for all the holiday things I have going on. I think I need some funky hair. <laughs> That's okay. what I'm missing out on. <laughs> okay. So, Ava, can I ask Ava? Can I ask you a question? Yeah. What, what, uh, cause you have so many things there to play with. What's your favorite? Like what do you get most excited to play with? <laughs> Let me bring it on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is it you love about that? I, I, sometimes I play with it. And when I play with no, it, okay. I, uh, I talk to it sometimes and it's funny. Is and it funny? I pretend like it's lying that is alive and I'm a person that is alive and it's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's very creative. I like that. Using imagination is what Ava loves to do best. Loves to do best. So earlier, before we went live, I was asking her, what should adults know about play and toys that children would like us to know? Uh, oh, that's a great question. Yeah, I always have to think of questions to find out uh, children's perspective. So Ava, uh -huh. what would you like to tell the adults who have children in their world? What should they know about play and toys? So. <laughs> she's telling me she's going to change her answer that she gave to me. <laughs> okay, that's allowed. <laughs> I don't even know what the answer is. Go for it. What what is it, Ava? Quickly, they're wrapping up. So um uh, uh the the um the last uh the thing that uh I think you uh that some people may not know is play. Uh, Cam see uh Kim sometimes seem like uh like. Uh, just uh, it's not just imagination it's real and imagination mixed up okay that's Ooh, good that's a great point it's, just, it's not just not make believe it's both it's real so yes. when you talk to the dogs is for real when you talk to your do dollies that's for real i understand that yeah that is an excellent point all right great this was fun we have gone way over a half an hour <laughs> Oh, we did. I, I, I was like thinking like we were not even there, but we have. All right. That's okay. We're having fun. Um, any <laughs> questions from anybody uh, watching? If there's any questions, put it in the chat. Would you do you want to know about something specifically for your child? Are you wondering something? Um, <laughs> While well, we have funky hair over here. Okay. And I, I would also find real, and, and we can maybe do a follow up on this, but if, if there's any hesitations you might have of, of introducing some of these things, and I think like Prina talking about the woodworking or any concerns, um, let us know. And if we get enough interest there, we can maybe do a follow up of kind of addressing some of those hesitations you might have. Yes, a totally in our imaginative world, 24 seven. So yeah. <laughs> Ava, thank you so much for joining us. You made this so much fun. Mm -hmm. You want to know what I made this out of? 
What'd you make it out of? Just a pom pom. I. Uh, the pom pom has been destroyed. You pull the hair out. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't know that you could pull the pom pom apart like that. No idea. I had no idea. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay, before we destroy any more pom poms, I think we're done for today. All right, bye everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Um, look forward to hearing from you if you have any comments. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye. bye Ava. Bye, Ava. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.